and welcome to the 20th annual Franklin County Quilters Guild Quilt Show. Every year in April, um, Franklin County Quilters get together and they like to put on a show of all the quilts that we have made during the year. Um, our own quilts we've given away, we've made for ourselves and we do charity quilts as well. Um, and that is one of the main functions of the Franklin County Quilters. We get together once a month and have a meeting, but we also do so much for the community in Franklin County. We support a lot of the local charities. Um, we have some quilts that we have here, right when you walk into the quilt show at City Hall, and here are just some of the, um, the charities that we support. So one of them is Home Health. Uh, we do a lot of quilts for Home Health and those are given to the Home Health patients. And we do Bags of Love, which is something that when kids are taken out of homes from DCF and placed in foster homes, they get a Bag of Love, which has a quilt and it has personal items and usually a toy um, all in one big bag. Uh, that's a really nice thing that we do. We're supporting Camp Tecumta. Uh this summer. We're making a lot of quilts and each camper is going to have a quilt on their bed and they'll be able to take that home. Breast cancer uh, quilts for victims and families and survivors. We do a lot for them each year. We, can, we have qu quilt kits that are made up ahead of time and members take those home, do up the quilts and then bring them in and they're given to um, breast cancer people. We also have a disaster fund now, like if uh, Franklin, anybody in Franklin County has a fire or, you know, the flooding that we recently had this year, um, we also have uh, larger size quilts that we will um, bring to them um, in the event of a disaster. We also have Lori's House, which is a shelter for women and children um, of abuse, and we provide quilts for them as well. And then there's also another thing that we do. Uh, members will make fidget quilts, and these are for people with Alzheimer's. And it just, it has, um, the quilts have buttons and they might have ribbons and they might have zippers and just little things that hang so that you know people just have something to do with their hands when they're feeling a little fidgety and it covers their lap but it also gives them something to do with their hands too. Um, other things that we do for as far as the guild goes is each year we put together a raffle quilt for a local charity. And we give it to that charity and they use it to fundraise with. And this year's raffle quilt behind me is the um, blues, and it's, the name of this pattern is called Narragansett Blues. And this, this is all done by our members. Everybody made the four patches and donated the blue rectangles and that's all been put together. And this is going to be given to the Jim Bashaw Cancer and Catastrophic Illness Fund, and they will be raising uh, money with this by selling raffle tickets. So if you see it here um, on the show or you come into the quilt show this weekend, you can contact somebody from that fund and you will be able to buy raffle tickets. It's a beautiful queen size quilt. Um, another thing that we do during the quilt show is people come in and they get little ballots and they can walk around and it's like a viewer's choice. They pick out quilts that they really like and then they vote on them. There's usually a bed quilt category, uh, miniatures, uh, lap and crib quilts. There's, we usually have a uh, challenge quilt section and I'll talk about that later. So people do that, and then we have these beautiful ribbons that the quilt members that made the quilts and, and uh, won the award will get, and that, those are always very coveted here. Um, we do have a lot of sponsors for this quilt show, local uh, sponsors. Like we have um, the Vietnam Veterans and Handy Toyota, Sassy Scissors, People's Trust, Hannaford's, American Legion, the Sportsman's Club of Franklin County, Tannenberger Veterinary Hospital, um, Yankee Pride is one of the vendors that's here, the Eloquent Page, which has great books down the road, and Franklin County um, Rehab Center, and then the VFW Auxiliary Post 758. So we have a lot of um, local businesses that also support the show. And we do not charge admission to come into the show, but we're always hoping that people will buy um, a raffle ticket for 
our raffle quilt and that's how we support all of our charities um, with that money. So let's um, come in and, and, and take a look. I wanna just talk a minute about the Franklin County Quilters raffle quilt that we make. Um, actually this year, our member Denise Chase put this beautiful quilt together. Um, and then she also machine quilted it as well. But this is a beautiful queen size quilt all done in um, blue batiks. And it's just beautiful. And as I said, we do sell raffle tickets when people come in if they wanna buy them. Um, and the money from the raffle uh, ticket sales goes to support the guild and, and all the charities that we work with. So, you know, hopefully we'll raise a lot of money on that and somebody will go home tomorrow at the end of this weekend with um, a nice quilt. And I just want to say that the guild was started in 1991 and it started out with eight women and some of them still belong to the guild and now it's grown to about 75 or 80 people when we have um, some younger young women in the group there's also a couple of men that that come um, with their wives to support them I, I'm not really sure if any of those are quilting yet but they might get the bug and we meet uh, the third Wednesday of every month at the Church of the Rock at 630 so if anybody's interested in joining our quilt guild um, come on down and we'd love to love to have you see what it's all about Okay, this quilt here that we have in our entryway, it's called Twisting the Night Away. As you can see, the pinwheels kind of twist and turn. And we ha have a member, Ann Jacobs, that was in our guild. She was also the longest running president of our guild for four years. And Ann sadly passed away from cancer this year. But we have a special exhibit of her quilts here this weekend. And this is just one of them. She was really good friends with a couple other women in the guild, Roseanne Terrell, who has now moved out west, and Joanne Sweet. And they would get together all the time and work together. And so Ann made this quilt and her friend Roseanne um, machine quilted it so later we'll we'll go through Ann's other quilts but I just wanted to show you this one one of the things our guild members like to do every year is we like to have a challenge as if quilting isn't challenging enough and this year our guild members were challenged to create a small quilt so it had to be less than 30 inches using black and white and only one other color so we did get a, f a few people that rose to that challenge and you can see here that um, there's some really creative things that that went on and I'll just briefly talk about um, each one that we have entered and again this is another category and there will be a winner um, of this category at the end of the quilt show so here's one of the three color black and white and Nancy Lapointe did red and it's called a fractured cabin and log cabin is one of a, a quilt block that quilters often use so this is little little off off center and it's got some great quilting that she did um, so she made a log cabin block and then she sliced it and put it back together and then quilted it so that's really neat the one next to it is called Black, White, and Red, and that's by Maggie Stockwell. And she found the um, pattern called Winter's Stars online, and she just changed the colors to fit this challenge. Now here's one called A Slice of Orange, and this is by Claudia Moykins. And this is um, machine paper pieced, and what that means is the pattern is actually printed on paper, and by there's a certain technique that you have to put the pieces of fabric on that pattern and then you sew right through the paper and you get very precise points on there so it, paper piecing is just another style of quilting and there's many styles and I'll talk about that during the day uh, down below here is another red white and black quilt by Sharon Perry and she says the title of this quilt which is Notch News convergence style she says what is black and white and red all over and Ricky Timms is an um, an international quilter and this pattern is one of his and it's called convergence okay here's one with black and white and pink and it's called spinning pinwheels by Helen Short and she said that she had made a quilt for her niece's wedding and in the wedding colors were with pink black and white and pink and after she made the quilt she had all these leftover pieces so she says hey 
you know, why not just do that? And um, so she made this quilt and it's also going to be for this couple's firstborn baby. Here's an awesome quilt by Nance Eckert. Um, it's called Midnight Flight. And she tried to incorporate a lot of different techniques that she had never tried before. She said some were successful and, and some weren't, but she tried it. She learned a great deal and she tried some new products and she said she did spend a lot of time ripping out. So um, that's part of the creativity pro process. But it's beautiful and even one of the wings of the dragonfly, you can't really see it because it's on black behind, but it is um, a see-through just like dragonflies are, so it's awesome. Right, Kay Benedict uh, did this one here, and it's called On the Last Day of the World. And this is a quote from W.S. Merwin, On the Last Day of the World, I Would Want to Plant a Tree. And she said that she took this quilt idea from a photo that her cousin's son had taken. So she had the, the tree is the white part, and then she quilted in the negative space behind it with um, black and gray threads. It's really pretty cool. Okay, here's a quilt that Diane Kane has done, and she's the president of our quilt guild this year, and she calls this playing with purple in preschool. <laughs> and it was inspired by a painting that her three-year-old granddaughter did. So when she heard about the guild challenge, a black, white, and one other color, color she decided to do it with the different shades of um, purple, just like a three-year-old would do. Pretty fun. Chris Bashon decided she would do black and white and blue, and this is called practicing, practicing scales. So she just liked the color combination, and it's even got the G cleft up in the upper corner, but it does look like scales. One of the categories that we have for people to vote on is uh, small and miniature quilts. And we have a few of those here this year. And the top three are all like landscapes. And we'll talk about that. We did have a quilter, uh, Ann Standish, who is uh, local from Vermont. She's actually from Jeffersonville. And we had her come to our guild and she gave a workshop on doing these landscape quilts and the technique that she uses and it was really interesting. So Bonnie Evans did finish hers and it, the process involves using a picture and you bring in the picture and it's done in black and white so that you can see the contrast and then it's you trace a design onto tracing paper then copy that same design onto freezer paper to use as your pattern pieces and then you cut those out and then you um, use like a bonding technique and then you can move the pieces around as you're playing with your different colors and your different fabrics to get the the different things in your scene and then so Bonnie finished this she did a lot of um, embroidery with her machine on this. Uh, it's called thread painting and it came out great. It gives a lot of li little depths to it. So this is, you know, a scene here in Vermont. The small one in the middle by Alice Bushy is called On the Farm. This is a paper piece pro um, project. Again, you can get some really precise points and just you, it's almost like a flip and sew technique. So that's really neat with the red barn in the background. She did a great job on that. This beautiful quilt here is um, by Diane Kane, and she also took Ann Standish's class. And this is a view of Jay Peak in the winter from her house. And so she started out again with a picture um, right from her, for, from her house with this barn in the background. And uh, she worked this up and she added some nice little, little borders. And again, she did some thread painting with her machine on there and it's beautiful. It was a fun class and obviously people learned a lot. <laughs> this fun um, rooster was done by Kay Benedict, and she calls this Cordon Bleu. And she went to the Vermont Quilt Festival that's always at the end of June in 2017, and she took a class with Ann Shaw um, uh, using Ruth McDowell's piecing technique with this chicken pattern. And so she decided to, to do this up and enter it in our miniature quilt this year, and it's real fun. 
This gorgeous little quilt here in the middle is by Nance Eckert, and it's called Into the Woods. And this is really interesting because she said she always loved paintings by the great Impressionists. And so she tried to have that same kind of style um, in this, and it says, it, other than the focal trees, so that would be the trees on the right and the left, and the binding, so the binding is the, um, the outer edge, if you will, all the fabric used was cut into pieces so it looks like confetti. It's really something if you look up close and then it was, this was like all bonded so it's, it's really stiff but it's, it, it's really fun because it does look like just pieces of confetti when you get up close but when you step back it gives a, an impressionistic design. Yeah. Kay Benedict calls this fun little quilt, When is a Curve Not a Curve? And she created this quilt for the Sew Batik Challenge of the Vermont Quilt Festival last year. And they were challenged to interpret an illusion. And she said that if you step back far enough and look, you'll, it'll, it'll have a curved appearance, these blocks. These are snowball blocks, but it'll be curved if you step back. And she even has on her little message here that if you look at it through a cell phone you, you you see it because it you know you can back it way up so that's pretty neat an illusion quilt we have every year was we have um, a few vendors local businesses um, near and a little bit farther in Vermont that will come and they will do demonstrations for the people that come to the quilt show they will sell all sorts of quilting things fabric and patterns and threads and um, machines even. Um, we have one of our own members that has a, a quilting table here and she sells bags and quilts and scarfs and all kinds of things. But um, So we do have like Sunny Laurel Sisters is here and Bonnie Evans with her blissful bags and we have um, Country Time and Yankee Pride are here and then there's a Sewing More in Vermont. Um, we have quite a few vendors and they also donate um, to our quilt show as well. So it's nice just to have people come in and view it, but quilters that come, they like to shop. So you can always find something new. Now we're gonna just walk around the quilt show and look at the beautiful quilts that are here and talk a little bit about each one. Um, this beautiful one is by Nancy Lapointe and she calls it Harlequin. And it's got some great colors and some great fabrics in there. And you can even see that the top and bottom edges are not squared off. They actually have that same design um, to them. So that's kind of fun to do a different design on the edging of your quilt. And but quilters love to go to workshops and quilting retreats. And Nancy did this at uh, J Peak last fall in October. J Peak has probably about 100 quilters that, that come, and that's sponsored by Country Time um, Quilting. And we have a lot of fun that we get a lot done. This quilt's called Sisters by Choice, and this is machine pieced and long arm machine quilted by Christy Mullica, one of our members. And she, she loves using little s scraps of fabric, and she became a fan of the quilt author Bonnie Hunter, and Bonnie Hunter loves to do patterns with scraps of fabric, and this is just one of the ones that Christy picked out and did. And she calls us sisters by choice because Christy's an only child, but she says she's her best friend is the sister that she's chosen. But the colors are great, and the quilting's awesome. Here's another quilt by Nancy LaPointe, and this is a pink sampler. And this is a beautiful quilt. She also has a long arm machine, um, and she does the overall quilting on this. And a long, there's ways to quilt a machine. You can do it by hand, which is the way, you know, quilting started out with just a needle and a thread. And then you ha you can use your own sewing machine, and you can move the quilt under the sewing machine and get the quilting done, uh, top stitching that way. And then a lot of people, and there's businesses that have what's called a long arm machine, and it's it's got big bars and the quilt is spread over it and the machine actually moves out over the quilt and puts the puts a design in there you can either drive the um, machine yourself 
and create the pattern, or there's some that are computerized and it's programmed in. And this is a great example of what a long arm machine can do because it's in the lighter uh, fabrics, you can just see the there's feathers and swirls, and it it's just really makes a, a quilt pop. It's beautiful. She did a really nice job. Here's a great quilt by Margaret Miller, and she titled this Hotsy Dotsy. <laughs> and I guess they've had a lot of dachshunds because she said every dachshund we've ever owned had their own um, personality. So what she did with this pattern, she put sweaters on all these little dachshunds, and they're real fun, and they're all, all different dots, and they're all bright colors, and even there's one, the two dachshunds that actually have glasses on. <laughs> This quilt by Nancy LaPointe is called Nine Patch with Sashings. And the Nine Patch is one of um, a very traditional block that quilters have used over the years. And she said this was just, um, the simple nine patch quilt was just a, a real easy opportunity for her to do a light custom quilting. And you really have to get up close on this one in the darker colors to see that custom quilting, but there's a lot of feathers and a lot of swirls in, in this. Do you have to get up close to see it though? One of our members, Cindy Mater, um, she entitled this My First Quilt Class, and I didn't get to talk to her about it, but if this was her first quilt class, I'm really impressed, but this is beautiful. It's, you know, got the stars, and Bev Cook, who is another member, and she does have a machine quilting business. It's called uh, Treasured moments she did the machine quilting on this which is beautiful as well but it's it's this is a great spring quilt to me it's got purples and greens and yellows and it's just really bright and the the quilting with all the feathers and the purple is just outstanding so if this was her first quilt class cindy you narked that out of the park this quilt is machine piece by terry brunel and this is called dear jane and there's a woman in the 1880s, Jane Stickle, and she's from southern Vermont, and during the war she would just take scraps of fabric and she would make blocks. And she made a quilt that has over a thousand pieces in it, and that's at the Bennington Museum. They'll put it on display in the fall, and it's just amazing if you really like the historical fabric. And these patterns, Jane Stickle actually designed on her own, each little block, and they're tiny, tiny pieces. Um, and it's, it's a lot of work, and I've tried doing some of these too, and I've done about 50 of them, but it's a lot of work because it's a lot of pieces. So Terry did an awesome job on this, and Karen Abramovich was the one that did the machine quilting on it. So here's something exciting that just happened at the quilt show. Our sponsors um, get to decide which quilt they like the best, and People's Trust has chosen Terry's Dear Jane quilt. And that's so great because it is a lot of work. So congratulations, Terry. Deborah Dolby machine piece this quilt, and she called it Kaleidoscope 3. If you look at the floral fabric that's in the bigger border right next to the blue, she took that fabric, and there's a, t uh, there's a technique by Bethany Reynolds of Maine that's called stack and whack. And you have to take the layer, different layers of this fabric, you have to line them all up so the design is exactly the same underneath, and then you cut them into triangles, and they're all, they all come out different when you make the blocks. So this one fabric, this floral on the outside, has made all the blocks on the inside but you see how they've come together differently. It's just the way it's, it's cut and put together and the way that the layers of fabric are lined up. Beautiful job. Okay, this quilt is by Chrissy Kilburn, machine pieced, and she calls this for my special angel, and her special angel is her granddaughter, Sarah. She bought the Snowman Angels, which you see in the blocks, in 2013, because she and her granddaughter just love making snow angels together. So, and, and these are like precious moments, little snowmen. So she put this together, and hopefully Sarah will treasure this for a long time and think about her grandma. This quilt is called Summer Solstice, and it's machine piece by Alice Rulo, and she said her daughter and she learned to do this design at one of our Franklin County Quilters Good 
Guild's workshops two years ago. And they it was a Deb Tucker design, and they used three different Deb Tucker rulers, which really do um, make the process go faster. So she said the workshop was really fun, took her a long time to complete the quilt, but it's finally done. And this was machine quilted by Karen Abramovich. Uh, earlier, I talked about our member, Ann Jacobs, who had passed away. And these are a few of her quilts that her family has brought in and let us put on display. So the the first one we're going to talk about is called the Bumbling Bee Block Exchange. And Anne made that in 2004. Um, it, some, of, some of the blocks she did, some of her friends did. And in Northern Virginia, she said they constructed the blocks and then she put them together. So these are all different kinds of uh, like a star block and it's a Christmas fabric theme. And then it's machine quilted by her friend Roseanne Terrell. Something that uh, quilters love to do is to make Christmas tree skirts for everybody. And this is a beautiful one by Anne that she did. And she was famous for her tree skirt. She made them for everybody. And this is a beautiful one with um, purples and greens. It's, you know, some Christmas fabric, but it's just, it's like Anne was herself. She was just colorful and, and cheery and it, it definitely just shouts Anne. And then there's a, um, a Christmas tree table topper on the bottom that she did. And that's another Christmas uh, item that she did. And then we have this beautiful quilt here that is called Janice's quilt that Anne made. And she made this for her husband David's great aunt Janice. And again, I don't know about the great aunt Janice, but this is Anne with the bright colors and the beautiful flowers. And it's got some beautiful quilting on it, but it's just so bright and cheery. And, Wow, we need that here because we just got some snow in April. <laughs> this quilt is by our member Nadine Froebel and she machine pieced it and she long arm quilted it herself. She has one of those machines and she named this Moments of the Orient and she said that she was collecting oriental fabric for a long time. She finally found a pattern she wanted to do with it and then she put the quilt together and this was a gift for her sister. The quilting that she did on that sort of mimics like tree branches that's in, that's in between the oriental fabric blocks. It's probably kind of hard to see on the TV, but it's, it's very unique. You get up close and it just adds a little extra punch to that theme. We have a lot of quilters in the guild that have a lot of scraps. Everybody has scraps. You don't want to throw them out. You want to use them up. Shirley Babcock did this quilt and she used a lot of scraps in this and she machine pieced it and she mid-arm machined it so I think she used her domestic sheen at, machine at home. So this is another Bonnie Hunter um, scrappy quilt and it's called uh, Tomello Trails and Shirley says I still have more scraps to use it seemed they have a way of multiplying in my sewing room and I think that's what happens. <laughs> Another great um, bright quilt here is this is by Terry Brunel and she calls this Midnight Flight. And again, it's a Bonnie Hunter quilt design. Again, all scraps, she said, except for the cheddar color, which is, uh, is that bright orange, it's called cheddar. And back in the Civil War days, that's a color that they use quite frequently. And then the red color, of course, throughout the quilt is not a scrap color. So she says that this has a lot of a mo movement kind of feeling to it because of all the little little scraps and the color combinations. Beautiful. This is a machine pieced hand appliqued and hand embroidered quilt by Diane Forey. And Diane loves um, to work with wool and she loves to do hand applique and hand embroidery. This was a block of the month pattern where each month you would get the pattern, you'd get the fabric, and then you'd do the block and the next month you go on to a different, a different pattern. And then at the end you put it all together, um, put your borders on and finish it off. Now she said she started this uh, block of the month pattern in March of 2014 and she did do it every month this did have words on every block but she decided to leave those out so she calls this words to live by without the words and last summer she decided that she was going to finish the quilt 
but she had done all the blocks and then she realized that she had to make 672 half square triangles. So those are the little triangles. And she said, wow. But she figured out a way to do it. She used a paper triangle method by laundry basket quilts to make all those. She made 48 half square triangles at one time. And then she finally finished the 672, put it all together. And then she had it machine quilted by Babette Coons, the quilt lady. Another bed quilt um, that we have here, and this is Nadine Froebel, it's called Twilight uh, Hopscotch. And this is going to be a gift for her brother and sister-in-law. Oh, I hope it's not a surprise because I just spoiled it. She did have to take the pattern and she had to double it um, to fit the bed. And that's what quilters often do. They might see a pattern they like. It might be a smaller one than they need or might, it might be bigger than they need and they just adjust it. A lot of math goes into quilting. This amazing quilt is by Rose Rickson. It's hand pieced, hand appliqued, and hand quilted. And she calls this everlasting love. And this is called, um, it's, a, it's a pineapple quilt is what the blocks are called. They're all different. And she said that her grandson Bill is marrying a woman named Emily who likes Hawaiian style. And so Rose decided that she would do this for them um, as a wedding gift I guess so she said it took her quite a few months to do this and Rose does amazing hand work it's just beautiful and these are you know pretty much the Hawaiian colors a little bit subdued but it's florally in design and then Rose actually um, took one of the designs in one of the blocks and echoed that in her quilting in in the big blocks that are around the edges in the white section it's just beautiful this quilt is called my first embroidered quilt and it's by Roland Fortin. It's machine pieced, machine embroidered and long arm quilted all by Roland herself. So, you know, you can do just regular sewing and strips and um, on your machine or there's also machines that will embroider different things on there. You can move the machine to embroider it. I'm not quite sure how Roland did this, but I mean, it's very intricate embroidery on here and then it's very intricate machine um, quilting around it too. I mean, it's just fabulous. This scrappy quilt by Nancy LaPointe, she called it Insanity, AKA Red Crumbs. And again, she says, I hate to toss out fabric scraps. So she spent a few evenings stitching her tiniest pieces, which would be in the center, and there's some very tiny ones there, into three and a half inch blocks. And eventually she had 180 of these little blocks and she used um, electric quilt, which is, it's something that helps you do layouts, uh, computerize, and it kind of helped her figure out the final layout. So she put it all together with this red, machine quilted it, and it's awesome. It's another one by Nancy LaPointe. She calls this Starburst. It's a gray background, but it has all these bright, fabulous, funky uh, fabrics that she's used in the different blocks. And this is from the pattern called Swoon by Camille Ros. Roskelly, and then she used a, a real graphic quilting pattern to complement the piecing. This quilt is called Under Wraps Mystery by Alice Bushy. Um, she machine pieced it and then she had a long arm um, quilted by Margaret Miller who was also in her guild. Every year, well not every year, but one of the things a guild does uh, we like to do is it's a, a mystery quilt and you get each month you'll get a piece of the pattern and it might start out with it. it'll tell you how much fabric and maybe not what colors but contrasting colors what how much fabric to buy and then the, the first month it'll tell you how you cut it and then the next month it'll tell you how to put some pieces together and each month you get a different step of the process and you don't really know what it's going to look like until you get to the very end and put it all together. So this is Alice's mystery quilt and it came out great and she is really happy with how it came out. It's really pretty.
This, is, this quilt is called Roscoe's Quilt, and this is made by Diane Kane and quilted by Bev Cook. And Diane said that her older son, Roscoe, he requested this bed quilt from her. Because two years before that, she had used the same pattern, which is called Labyrinth, and made a bed quilt for Roscoe's brother, Arland. The colors were a little different, she said. Um, so now both boys have similar quilts, and everybody's happy. They both have one. Here's a great fall quilt uh, by Peggy Parody, and she calls this the colors of fall. She's used fall fabrics, fall colors, um, and it's machine quilted by Bev Cook. It's a pretty quilt. This quilt is called Colorado Block, and this was made by Natalie Good. And, you know, quilters love to buy fabric, but we also like to be given fabric. And she said that she got a lot of batik fabrics, which is what all the uh, colored fabrics are in this quilt, uh, for Christmas. And so she decided this would be a fun quilt to show off that material, and it, it really does. And she said she used a time-saving technique for making those half-square triangles, because um, she started out with 10-inch squares of each one of those fabrics came out great, Natalie. This quilt is called Jewels of the Universe and it is amazing with all these stars and celestial fabric and this was machine piece and long arm quilted by Roland Fortin. It's stunning. Here's a quilt by Sharon Perry and she calls it X marks the spot. She had a lot of four patch blocks um, that you can see in this and she decided that she would use another one of Bonnie Hunter's patterns. Everybody loves Bonnie Hunter's scrappy quilt patterns and she put this together and it's a lot of fun. It's got you know sc scrappy fabrics all around the outside and in those four patches and then it's got the settings of the the green and the yellow in the middle and it's awesome. This quilt is by Denise Chase. This is hand-pieced. Um, this the pattern is called Cathedral Window, and that is what she titled this quilt. And she wanted to do a quilt like this for a long time. It was on her bucket list. She said, "This pattern requires 30 yards of background fabric." And she couldn't find all 30 yards of anything except muslin, so she decided to do different pastels. And all hand done it's it's amazing i'll i'll show you the back because she starts out with squares on the back and then fabric on the front and she actually you know did the color design almost like a trip around the world where it starts in the center and it and it moves outward i watched her making this quilt and i, I know that it's a lot of work and her her handwork is unbelievable and this quilt is just gorgeous. Rita Dean made this uh, quilt that she calls Stars and Feathers and machine pieced hand applique, I mean machine applique, sorry, and long arm quilted and Rita did this all herself. She's got a great uh, feather design in the center of the big beige blocks. This beautiful uh, maple leaf quilt is called Prelude to Sugaring, and this is done by Linda Nadu. And she said that it's a, it's a good part of Lynn and Ray's life, so she may have made this for somebody else, yes. She, so she asked what type of quilt that Lynn would like, and she chose one that want, was had maple leaves in it, Autumn Glory. So it kind of just reminds you of Vermont and the fall and then in the spring the sap's going to start running. Here's a quilt by Maggie Stockwell. Machine pieced, machine applicated, and um, she quilted it on her domestic machine. She said as a child her husband lived with visited his Nana Knox, who lived in Woodsville, New Hampshire. And he would walk down the street, sit in the fence, um, watch the trains go by. So she saw this pattern, which is called Row by Row, by Seem So Easy, of Woodsville, New Hampshire. And she said she had to make it into a quilt. So it's, uh, it's great. There's the train. There's a train going by that he would have wa watched. And um, it's a great quilt. Okay, Peggy Parody called this one Calm Seas, and this is Long Arm Machine by Margaret Miller, but the colors are, um, are really unique here. They're, they're, pat, they're, they're, they're paler colors, but they just have that nice flow, and you have some, the blocks look like they're curved, but they're not. This quilt here is called Maya Goes to Colli College by Alice Rulo, and 
Maya was going off to college, so she, Alice wanted her to have something that reminded her of home. So she made these bright batiks on the front and to cheer up her room at college. And on the back, she actually embedded some family photos. And let me see if I can turn this and so you can see the back. But I'm not sure that you can. Oh. I don't know if you can see these. Or you need to get closer. So that's something nice for a young girl to take to college. Another thing that quilters really like to do is they like to shop for fabric and patterns and books. And something that happens every year is called the shop hop. And quilters will get in their cars, their vans with their friends, and they'll travel around to the different shops um, in the state. And there may be a specific theme that's going on that year. They might pick up a piece of pa that pattern um, at each quilt shop. There'll be you know, discounts at the quilt shops and they just have a lot of fun accumulating more fabric and, and more quilting tools. And this um, quilt is something that Cindy Mater said that she chose the fabrics on one of the, the shop hops in 2013. And then she decided to put it all together and she calls this our bed quilt. This quilt by Linda Nato is called Neutral Love. And so this was um, she went on a trip with Beth and saw a quilt that she loved looking at many patterns and they decided to choose this one which is called a split rail fence. It's a really easy block. It's just uh, three fabrics, three uh, rectangular pieces and put together and then you know you turn the block and it, it kind of tumbles down like a split rail fence almost. This is great. It's a dramatic effect with the, the beige, the brown and the black. This quilt is called Summer Stars by Maggie Stockwell, and it's great with the pinks and the um, pinks and the greens, and it's uh, very springy. This quilt by Shirley Babcock is called Curves in Pink, and she was one of our members that also has attended uh, J Peak retreats in the fall, and she attended a class where they were shown how to make a curved log cabin block. And the log cabin block starts with a little center block, and then it has um, colors on each side and, and what she did here is she has the whites on one side and the and the pinks and purples on the other side so she decided to use her fabrics and she would make hers in pink this fun quilt by Sharon Perry is called Snips and Snails and Puppy Dog Tails. And this was machine pieced and long arm machine by Sharon herself. And she again likes Bonnie Hunter's um, patterns in her books and Bonnie Hunter uses what she calls leaders and enders and so what you end up with is you have a lot of four patch blocks um, of all scraps and Sharon decided she was going to make wonky blocks which means that they don't sit straight on they kind of turn a little bit so that's in the center of each block and then her setting fabric is all bright dog print so that's fun. Here's a quilt that I actually made called ha Happy Campers. I was at the J Peak Requilt Quilting Retreat last fall and I saw this flannel fabric with these cool little camping motifs. You know, the old fashioned camper and the trucks and all that. And we have friends that just bought a camper. So I said, oh, now I know what I'm gonna do with it. So I had some other pieces of flannel and I put it together and I gave it to them, but I had to take it back for the quilt show. So I love working with flannel. It's nice and soft and it was just real simple just to put those squares together, easy pattern. The next two quilts are by Sally Krupp and she machine pieced these and she long arm machined them herself. And these are Kim Deal's designs. So that's what she started with the pattern. So this blue one, she said her cousin got her a great deal on plumbing supplies when they built their new house. So he recently got married. So she made this quilt as a thank you. So it was her first attempt at cross hatching. And that's the quilting that, um, that's just the, the lines that are just parallel to each other, but they cross each other. And that's called cross hatching. So she did a nice job on that. And then the one next to it, in the red, again, this is the same design, but she made an error when she was putting it together. Nobody's perfect, that just goes to prove that. So when she was putting the small blocks together, she put them together a little differently. It was supposed to be exactly the same as the blue one, but if you look at them both, 
the consistent block error makes the quilt a little different, which is really fun because sometimes that happens and it still comes out and it looks great. This little quilt here is called Double Slice, and this is by one of our younger members, Maggie Short. She comes with her grandmother, Helen Short, to the meetings, and she's participated quite a lot. And it, uh, sometimes at the meetings, we will have um, a door prize, or we'll have a prize for people who have made uh, a charity quilt. And Maggie actually won these fabrics at one of these meetings. So she decided she would use this double slice pattern um, with those fabrics and it came out great and the 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 pattern the fabrics line is called commas so it's it's sort of like techie almost and it's a great thing for a, a young person to have put those together like that looks great this quilt is called blowing in the wind and it's machine pieced and quilted uh, with a regular machine by Jeannie Ann Branch and she said that this quilt was made from leftovers of a quilt she made five years ago. So she took the half square triangles that were left over and she played around with them and she put them together with this gray background fabric and the border and the backing came to her in a box of fabric from a friend many years ago. So it actually looks like little blocks on the outside but that's actually the fabric. So she did a great job with that and it's bright and cheery. Helen Short did this um, animal quilt and it's called Forest Creatures. She said she made the blocks um, for Elizabeth Hartman's fancy forest quilt. And then she divided all the blocks she had made into three smaller quilts. So one she sold to a friend, another she donated to a charitable organization for a raffle, and this one's going to be given to a niece who's having a baby in July. So out of all the blocks, she got three quilts out of them and it's so cute. This quilt by Sally Krupp, um, she just named it Red, White, and Blue, and it's a Kim Deal design. And the interesting thing about this is when she quilted it with her long arm machine, she used a variegated thread, so red, different reds and blues and yellows. So it changes color as it's quilting, and she did it in the, in the lighter blocks in the background, and it has a really striking effect. It's just a, a real different kind of effect to look at. It's cool. This quilt is by Nancy LaPointe and it's called a 16 patch with stars. And the 16 patch, you can see there's 16 squares in each block. And then she actually quilted it with a curvy pattern so it makes it look a little curvy when you get up close. And then she has an awesome um, feather design in the outer triangles. She discovered this pattern on a web blog, uh, brianhousequilts.com, and she said that this block was referred to as a coffin block. Uh, there really wasn't any explanation it, for that. But she did use the uh, continuous curves in the 16 patches and the feathers in the stars. It's really unique. Another quilt by Nancy LaPointe. This is called a disappearing nine patch. Um, this was an idea of Christy Doms to stitch a disappearing nine patch pattern and coordinate it with a graphic quilting pattern. So she did this herself on her long arm machine with some really funky fabrics too, that's fun. Here's a purple quilt, it's called That Purple Thing. Um, I did this, Carol Stanley. These blocks were from a Jenny Doan class that I took. At, um, she came to our guild. She's a fabulous international quilter as well. And I had these blocks and I, I didn't really know what to do with them, didn't really think they were, didn't like them all that much, but I was at the Jay Peak retreat and a friend of mine said, oh, if you lay them out like this and you do this and I had some extra fabric, I pulled it all together and I finished it off and it's done and it's great and purple and that'll, that'll be going for a charity quilt soon. This quilt is called Ice Castles by Sharon Perry. She made this quilt to test a pattern for a friend um, who dyes her own fabric. Um, all of the fabrics in this quilt are those that this woman dyed. So her name is um, Marion C. Schultz um, and her business is Winds Edge Studio. So the blocks and the backing fabrics were dyed using a technique called ice dyeing. Uh, that sounds interesting right there. So Sharon said she had a lot of fun putting it together and I'll just show you the back um, so you can see some more of that fabric. So ice dyeing, that's something I might have to go home and, and look up because it really just sounds interesting. 
This quilt here is called C.D. Waters' U.S. Army Story, and it was machine pieced and long arm machined by Anza Myers. She said she made this for her son-in-law, Corporal Daniel Waters. He, she used his uniforms, created a memory quilt for him um, of his tours, and then in the borders, I guess, is some information um, about his brigade, although you can't really see it here. So he talks about his tank, which is uh, somewhere in the quilt here, and he's got the insignia of the four Ivy Leagues, an important part of his uniform, unique to his unit. So it's represented either by patches or quilting in this quilt. So thank you, Dan, for your service to our country. So it's got all the, she's used a lot of the pockets from his uniforms, and she's added on the patches, and she, there's a lot of quilting in this, which has words in it. Um, it is a memory quilt, I'm sure. I'm sure he loves that. That's amazing. Okay, here's a quilt by Bonnie Evans, My Mystery Solved. And before I spoke about the mystery quilts that we do in the Guild, where each month you just get a piece of the pattern, you don't know what it's going to look like at the end. And this was um, the mystery quilt project that Bonnie did, um, the 2016 one, and she just used fabrics from her stash. She didn't go out and buy anything new. Go, Bonnie. We love to use up our stash. So we can buy some more. This bright and cheery quilt is by Terry Brunel, and it's called Bonnie Hunter's Wild and Goosey. This is like the Bonnie Hunter show here today because there's so many people that have used her patterns. This quilt was paper piece. So again, that was used a, like a paper backing, and then you add your fabrics, sew through the paper, and at the end, when you finish your blocks, you have to peel all that paper off. So. It's a, like a labor of love. So she said that this used 7,575 little pieces of scraps with the main color being that cheddar, which is that orange. That's a lot of little pieces of scraps fabrics, but it's one way to use it up and it's awesome. <laughs> Here's a beautiful quilt by Shirley Babcock. It's machine pieced, then she hand embroidered those blocks, and then she used her long arm mach machine to quilt it at the end. She says she really enjoys handwork, um, and she likes to brush up her on her embroidery skills, and that's what she did with this quilt. Pattern is called Ruby's Garden. It's beautiful embroidery, Shirley. Here's a fun quilt by Maggie Stockwell. It's, she calls it Jungle Buddies. She started this quilt back in 2011, and she decided to finish it this past year, 2017. And I can just say this, that uh, I think most of us quilters have projects that we started a long time ago, and sometimes we put them away and we don't finish them for a long time. But, you know, it's sitting there waiting for us. Here's a great quilt by Sally Krupp, and she makes a lot of Harry Potter quilts, and this one's called Harry Potter number three. And this is great in black and white. Um, it's got the characters from Harry Potter in the, um, the black and white fabric, and then she just did a nice um, pattern in the alternating blocks with a, a really fun, almost a celestial uh, black fabric with little white stars on it. It is cool. Jeannie and Branch did this um, t-shirt quilt for one of her friends and it's called A Slice of Life. She shares a birthday with one of her friends. So in 2016, she agreed to make her friend a quilt using the t-shirts that her friend had saved over the years. So she said starting the project proved difficult, but she did finish it this past July. Um, and she, she would send her little messages, uh, email or Facebook or whatever, say, well, today I'm starting your quilt or, you know, I'm still working on it or whatever. She said that um, her friend waited patiently and the end product was more than she imagined. So it's really an awesome quilt and people do save their t-shirts and they do like to have them made into quilts. Um, and I know Jean Ann made, and her friend made five of them for somebody else with his racing t-shirt. So it's a lot of work.
This quilt is called Scrappy Stars and Pinwheels, and it's a machine piece by Helen Short, and then she had Stonehurst Quilting um, do the quilting on the top. Helen said she took a class with Augusta Cole at the 2017 Vermont Quilt Festival, and she really got intrigued with this pattern because it, it creates a design within the design. So she started it, and she came home, and she finished the top, and it's great. It's got uh, pinwheels and stars, and it's, it does have a lot of design work in it. Here's a quilt by Rita Dean, uh, machine piece and machine applique. So the applique are the um, the pieces in the outside border, and they you usually have to turn under the edge and then either sew it by hand or you have to sew it by uh, machine. So she did a really nice job on that that border where that applique is beautiful and the colors are really pretty too. Here's another one by Rita Dean. Um, Scrappy is better with flowers, she said. And again, a machine applique. Check out the flowers in the border. And used all, a lot of scraps. And Bev Cook uh, machine quilted this one. You can tell that Rita Dean really loves to do applique. Because here's another one of hers. It's called Cornflower Siesta. And this one's really stunning because it's got some bright colors and in the background, in, in the lighter sh beige uh, blocks, is some amazing quilting done by Bev Cook of Treasured Moments Quilting. I mean, there's like little bubbles in there and there's spirals and there's like little stars. I just add so much sometimes to a, a quilt that's beautiful to start out with, but then you add the quilting and it's like, wow! This is, this is awesome. This quilt done by Claudia Moikens, um, she calls it leftovers. And she calls it that because she said it was pieced with leftovers of three other quilts. So hey, why th throw those little pieces away when you can put it together and make one more? And now you've made more, four. This quilt is called Atlantic Flyaway, and this is done by Connie Lane, and it was quilted by Bev, Bev Cook. Um, it's really stunning with the blues and the creams, and then that pop of that coral color in there, and the, the quilting is just phenomenal. And Connie says, I never made anything to hang on a wall in my house before, but I saw this pattern and decided to make it. It was fun to see it evolve, and it's gorgeous. Denise Chase made this uh, pink and white quilt, and she calls it Fer Parisian Flyaway. It's a machine piece, and then she hand quilted this. So she said her daughter and her husband won a trip to Curacao, and while there, her daughter brought her this collection of fabrics back. So she says, well, what am I going to do with it? Hey, and it's got the Eiffel Tower in it. So she put it together and named it Parisian Flyaway. Here's a small um, wall hanging. Uh, it's called Bugs in a Jar. I did this, machine pieced it, and then I machine quilted it. A long time ago, I had collected a bunch of insect fabrics, and I had made a couple of these quilts before. Somebody asked me to make a baby quilt, and I made one for them. And then I still had fabric left over. So I made this extra one, and that'll probably be a charity quilt as well. It, it's fun to do with those bugs. We got a lot of lot of bug quilts here this year. I think um, this one is amazing. This is done by Bonnie Evans. She hand pieced it, hand and machine applique it, and then she used her regular sewing machine to quilt it. And she calls this "Dance of the Butterflies." And I love the stories with these quilts. That's that's what's the fun thing I think for everybody that sees them. The story behind it. She said she saw this pattern, and decided she had to make it. So she loves batik fabrics and. So she decided she would use them in this. She chose fabrics um, that contrasted. And some of these are her own hand-dyed um, batiks that she had. And then she arranged the different pieces uh, onto a black background. She said she was really pleased with the end result, and I can see why. It's gorgeous. Now, even though winter is slowly going away, we have this quilt by Diane Forey, um, and she loves snowmen. This is machine pieced, hand appliqued, hand embroidered, and then she used her um, 
regular sewing machine to quilt the top of it. She said this pattern is from Buttermilk Basin. In 2016, they offered a free pattern each month to complete this quilt. So she changed the pattern a little to include the pickup truck, but that was also still another Buttermilk um, Basin pattern. And then she um, added some wool trees instead of what was pieced ones in the pattern. And she likes the way that this turned out, and so do I. She does awesome work. Shirley Babcock did this nice little wall hanging. It's called My Kind of Barn, and she did it all herself, machine piecing, machine appliqued. You see the vine and the, and the flowers, and then she machine quilted it. And this is a pattern designed by Sue Pritt, um, and it's called the Quilt Loft. She says, wouldn't it be, f wouldn't it be a fun barn to have on your property? Yeah, it's got the sewing machine up in the top, and you can spin your wool on the bottom and have some great uh, flowers around it. It's, it's cool. This is a pretty unique quilt by Helen Short. It's called Into Autumn. She said a couple of years ago she took a class by Pat Pollitt, but it was called The Big Leaf. She says, well, this class was a little out of my comfort zone, um, but she kept with it. She finished the top. It sat in her craft room for a while. And then, um, you know, she knew that it probably needed some really skillful quilting on it to enhance it. So she said this past fall, she met uh, Diane Camo at a quilt retreat and learned that she does custom quilting. So um, Helen had her finish this off, and it's, re it's really neat. Nice art quilt. <clears throat> Kay, Kay Benedict this, did this little quilt, it's called Big Lake, and she machine pieced it and quilted it herself on a regular sewing machine. She said after constructing, again, a wild colored leaf by Pat Pauly's workshop that Helen also took, she was, Kay was inspired to do another technique from Pat in a different class. Um, so she cut the quilt top into squares and rectangles and rearranged the pieces. That's pretty neat. She said, my leaf fragments, so this started out as a big leaf, but when she cut it up, she said the pieces of it looked like sailboats, and the big leaf became the big lake. So that's really neat. This is a quilt by Margaret Miller called A Long Walk Home. She, um, this is a pattern by Sue Pritt, and she said turtles are the most important creatures to her 10-year-old granddaughter. She eats, sleeps, and breathes turtles. So with this pattern, she says, I'm encouraging her towards a future in marine biology and having lots of fun learning something new herself. So a lot of what quilters like to do also are things to have around the house. It doesn't have to be quilts you lay under or have on your bed. It doesn't have to be a wall hanging. It can be table toppers. Um, it can be coaster mugs, lots of different things. So we have a few of those to show you here. Um, Denise Chase made this reversible table topper. And she says she likes to make them reversible because she can either do seasonal ones, one season on one side, one on the other. Um, and she uses a what she calls a split binding so that both sides have a coordinating binding when you flip it over. So this has a green binding on this side, but if you use it on the other side, it has the same fabric that goes with the background fabric. So it's the same, same pattern, um, different colors, and one side gets dirty. You could just turn it over and people think that it's clean. <laughs> Here's a Christmas table runner by Alice Bushy. Um, so she had used a, a log cabin ruler for this and a half log cabin ruler and made this. So this went together pretty neat and she's got Christmas fabrics. I'm sure she uses it at Christmas. And here's a table runner by Roland Fortin and she calls this Rangely Runner. And I think she went to a quilt retreat at Rangely, Maine and that's probably why, which one of the things she finished there and did it. Um, here's a table runner that I did. I called it Don't Worry, Be Happy. My husband and I have been beekeepers for eight years. And last year at the JP Quilt Retreat, I saw this bee fabric. And it's different triangles, and it's how it's cut up and then put back together. And it has the little bees. And I also like to do reversible, too. I mean, why not? You might as well. 
Uh, Alice Bushy did another uh, table runner and she called it a snow snowball table runner and the snowball is this block that's in the middle. Um, she's, so it was a 12 inch block pattern for the January block of the month and it was just hanging around and she decided to add it to a couple of nine patch blocks and make a table runner so she got rid of those blocks and that's a project that's done. And that is uh, something else that we do in the guild each month. Um, there is a pattern of a block of the month and uh, people can make the block, they bring it back and then all the blocks are put together and we raffle it off so somebody gets to take home like a whole set of blocks in a certain color or you know certain pattern for sure and then people can do it in a certain color or maybe it's different colors but that's kind of a fun thing you just win more things to put together. Here's an awesome um, table runner by Connie Lane, and she calls this hot stuff. You can kind of see why she might have uh, chose that, because those fabrics are really hot and fun and bright. And she was looking for a table runner with a lot of color. So the challenge was to get all the pieces sewn in the correct direction, she said. Because it sort of zigzags, but it's great. Another great thing we have at our quilt show every year is our teacup auction. And uh, we have members that have donated items of quilting or patterns or bags or cute little things that they've made. And people can come and they can buy raffle tickets and they can put their raffle tickets in on that item and hope that their number comes up and they can get a call at the end of the weekend that they won that item. So there's a lot of great things that people have donated, bags and pillows and table runners and like I said, and there's even quilting kits for quilters ourselves. I mean, there's something for everybody. Here's another quilt by um, Ann Jacobs that passed away. This is called Lone Star Meets Hunter Star. So that big star in the middle is, is the Lone Star pattern. So that's the center, and she's completed that block in 2003. And then she added the outside blocks, which is that pattern is called the Hunter's Star. So that surrounds the Lone Star, and she finished the entire quilt in 2009. So there is a project in the works, but sometimes that's the way it goes. Okay, just a little bit more about our, our friend Ann Jacobs that passed away, uh, that made some of these gorgeous quilts that we were allowed to have on display this year as a special exhibit. Um, there is a, a great picture of Ann with that beautiful smile that she had, and there's a picture of her with that bright um, flower quilt that she made. So we still have a couple more of her quilts to, to talk about here, but she, she definitely did some amazing, amazing work, and she was an amazing woman. Right, here is uh, one of Anne's quilts, and she called it Lake Champlain in all its whimsical splendor. I talked a little bit about we have a block of the month challenge where everybody makes a block and they bring it in, somebody wins it. So in 2009, um, these were the some of the blocks that were done for the block of the month challenge. And so Anne put this together and finished it on April 1st, April Fool's Day in 2011. But it does um, have a lot of the Lake Champlain things in it. You know, we have um, the lighthouses and we have Champ that's in the middle and um, I think we might have the fort down in the lower left. And we have probably the spiny turtle that's endangered and um, yeah, there's camping on Lake Champlain, fishing on Lake Champlain and you know, boating on Lake Champlain, so um, this is a great quilt. Okay, this is a, um, the 2014 Franklin County Quilters Guild charity quilt that Ann Jacobs, Joanne Sweet did, um, put it together, and then our quilter member, Roseanne Terrell, did the machine quilting on her long arm. So this was actually done and given to the Montgomery Historical Society. Um, so it was a labor of love. As um, you know, instructions were pretty difficult because there's a lot of pieces and it, you know, it had to be put together just right. Um, but you know, they personalized it to highlight the stained glass windows in the the Historical Society's Pratt Hall in Montgomery, and they used this as a fundraiser out there in Montgomery. It's beautiful.
This quilt of nine patches in batiks, um, sh this is Anne's, and she called this Anne's Bee Buddies Nine Patch. When Anne moved from Virginia <coughs> to Vermont, these were um, all blocks that were done by people in her quilting guild. And she, you know, we, she got these in uh, February of 2007. So that was all of her friends donating to her love of quilting. And here's a quiz, Christmas quilt that Ann did, and she called it Ann's Merry Christmas. It's got bright colors again and um, bright stars, and she completed this in 2006. <clears throat> Here is pretty special. Um, it's titled An Angel in Heaven. And the blocks in this quilt were given to Ann by all the members of our guild in June of 2013, because she had been president for four years and she did a great job. And they were given to her one month before she got her cancer diagnosis. So, you know, it was a thank you gift for all of her, her work as president and being a great friend. She never got a chance to put those blocks together. So in January of this year, Roberta Gilmore, Joanne Sweet, and Sharon Perry worked together to put this quilt top together. And then it was sent out to Arizona to our previous guild member, Roseanne Terrell and Anne's great friend, to quilt. And she quilted it, and they've named this Angel in Heaven for our dear friend. And she was a true angel, and now she knows she's watching over us. It's a gorgeous quilt, and everybody had a piece of that. So we talked a little bit about all the different awards that are given out. The vendors give awards. Um, and here's a quilt that Diane Forey did. And we talked about this previously, the words to live by. She got a vendor's award by Sewing Machines and More. But she also got the coveted Mayor's Award by Mayor Tim Smith. So I'll let her talk a little bit about her quilt. And maybe um, the mayor can say what he liked so much about it. Congratulations, Diane. Thank you. Um, it took me about four years to complete this quilt. It was a block of the month, which I kept up that for the a year with well, the blocks. But then when I got to this part where the half square triangles, I was a little intimidated and it took me a while to get motivated. So last summer I said, I am going to finish this quilt. So that's the only thing I worked on all summer long until I think I finished it in December and, and had it quilted. And Babette Coons did the quilting, and she did a marvelous job, and I'm happy it's done. <laughs> Mr. Smith, would you like to sure. give us your ideas <laughs> on that quilt? So uh, what I liked about this quilt was the, the uh, color base. Uh, I'm, I enjoy antiques. I enjoy um, older uh, settings uh, for, for a household, and these colors really struck me as being um, more of an antique look and um, obviously the amount of work that went into it was very impressive and I really enjoyed the the uh, squares I guess they're called so I thought this was um, for me was one that uh, I, I truly enjoyed so thank you for coming so once again we've had a fabulous uh, 20th a uh, quilt show here put on by Franklin County Quilters. It's been a great weekend. We have some amazing quilts here. Um, and I hope you enjoyed the show. And every April, we'll be doing it again. Thanks a lot for traveling along with us.